Hello everybody, it's that time of the week again, Steffi here from The Makers and it is um, the live stream on YouTube Tuesday at 1pm um, GMT and of course this gets repeated on Thursday um, this week on Facebook at 7pm so if you're um, not able to watch it all the way to the end you can definitely visit us again on Facebook um, this week at 7pm uh, and that would be the 17th um, of um, December 2020 goodness me how did we get here um, but I'm glad we are here so next year everything's gonna be new beginnings new beginnings that's what we need um, so we're doing a Christmas tree today this is um, originally been sort of designed to have it fitting with the little McHoggies that everybody's been really busy making. Heather is already in her best attire to um, welcome Homer home for Christmas. Um, you probably all have made holly now um, because it um, was the 2nd of Advent this Sunday gone. And then, of course, this Sunday you can open the third envelope, which will be Huey. And um, and then number four is going to be Homer and Homer will be home. Yay! I've seen so many lovely, lovely hoggies that appeared on um, our Every Wanna Make a Facebook page. So do make sure to join that one if you haven't done so yet. We just ask you to answer three questions. Mainly it is because we're only um, promoting the Makers products. It's our own in-house uh, group to support you and be friends with each other and um, so that's basically what we're doing. Right, I'm gonna have a quick look who is here today before we get started. I've got a competition again today as well so um, I will announce in a minute what we what we would like you to do to be in for a chance to win something that I will also tell you what that is and of course at the other end in my ear is Emma today um, so she will be busy typing out links and um, answering questions as and as you have them. Um, so Diane is here um, and Gina. Hi Gina. Hi Julie. Um, oh Alicia is here. Hi, hi Alicia. Fanny is there. Um, Diana is here. Top to toe. Oh I was gonna say I don't recognize that. This is my first time here. I look forward to meeting you all. And it's Sue. Lovely to see you, Sue. I'm really pleased you could make it today. Kim is here. Hi, Kim. Um, then we have got Donna. Hello, Donna. Um, Karen is here. Um, what's Karen saying? I Waiting patiently. Hoggies are getting created and having so much fun doing them. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, hi, Sue. So glad you joined us. That's Alicia saying that. We are a bit crazy, but in a fun way. Um, I, I'm not crazy. I'm completely normal. So no, speak for yourself, Alicia. You can't include me in this. Um, Faith is here. Oh, I've already said that probably. Um, who else? Oh, lots. Carol is there. Um, and just repeats now. So, um, oh yes, Kitty looks cozy. This is the maker's box this month. You've still got time to subscribe. Um, it makes a, a whole little kitten fast asleep with a posable tail so the tail you can bend there's a wire going round so he, he, the kid the kitten could be sort of curled up underneath the tail little cutie face fast asleep with whiskers and you get to make the cat basket as well which has actually given me ideas for my um, own cats to make them cat baskets they probably won't sleep in it but um because they prefer carrier bags and um, carton boxes but this is of course made from our structural um, core felt which you can buy from us um, in in different sizes as well so definitely big enough to make a proper size cat basket hint hint um, speaking on behalf of all your cats of course and um, talking about makers boxes let's just cover that so you get the um, the kitten in the basket makers box then you've got still got the snowdrop um, sprite there she is with her dingly dangly um, snowdrop and uh, she's holding a little silver bell as well I this is I will be honest this is probably one of my favorite um, fairies so far and um, of course there are lo lots of them that we've done since April 2020 and if you want to um, see if you can um, continue that collection that you may only have started recently we have some still for sale separately so they're also av available outside a um, subscription box and um, the uh, surprise box that we do this month is sparkle so you've still got time to get yours um, your sparkle box and then uh, just very quickly next month next month is just around the corner 
And of course, you haven't, I don't think we've featured this one yet. You can make yourself a life-size barn owl. I'll just leave that one sitting here for a minute. Absolutely stunning, um, amazing design um, with um, a little trick on the wings, which um, we're not giving away just yet, but um, you might find that really useful, how to know the, how to do the wings and the, you make the legs as well. And then we have our fairy is the love fairy because we all need a bit of love especially if you're crafting ahead for Valentine's Day. This might just be the perfect one. She's got, she's, she's quite elaborate. Um, she's holding a key, maybe the key to your heart. Um, and um, so this is all available, not until the 1st of January. So don't go rushing off getting all excited. You just got to wait a little bit because we're only in December now, but available as of the 1st of January, 2021. Right, let's get this tree um, going. There's the tree. That's what we're doing today. And I will be going with to the overhead camera. Oh, I haven't said, haven't said what you can win yet. So right, get your um, hands ready to type. So we're having a special, um, uh, a special live stream next week, which is the 22nd of, oh my goodness, so close to Christmas, the 22nd of December. We haven't given it a theme yet because we want to ask, we want to ask you um, to tell us what you want to know. So it's going to be like a bit of a chat. You can ask us questions about our products. Give us a heads up and put it um, on an email, info at themakers.co.uk so we can get ready and I've got all the stuff here if you're asking how to do this technique or how to use this tool and so on and so forth. Of course, we've only got an hour to do this. But today, just to get warmed up about this, the competition um, is all about asking us questions. So what would you like to ask today? Um, we might not answer it, but just put your wackiest question out there um, that um, you want to know about us, the makers, not necessarily the products, just about us. Let's ask questions. If you're lucky and I've got time to answer them, fair enough. But really what we're aiming for is that you can put in writing to us um, a question that you would like answering next week. Now, the questions that may come up today in the competition, they might just get people's little cocks turning in their head and thinking, ooh, I'm going to ask that question for real. So um, let's have a bit of a brainstorm what questions there might be coming. And in for a chance to win is whoever gets picked will get one of our um, Christmas pudding and robin bauble packs that obviously contains lots and lots of wool to make three robins and three um, puddings and you get the eyes for the robin in there as well and the instructions obviously that is for the lucky winner which we will announce as soon as I get to start making the star on the tree now um, I will repeat it again so let us know what you want Put a, a wacky question out right now. Let us know what you want to ask to um, be in for um, to win the uh, Christmas pudding and bauble, uh, Robin bauble pack. But we also want you to start thinking about questions that you want to ask us for next for next week. And the, the questions for next week, you have to put into email to us. So the email address is info at themakers.co.uk and uh, we will collect those um, questions. Maybe we can group them together and we can cover a few all in one go. And that's what we're asking you to do. So remember today, the questions you're asking will enter you in the competition. The questions you want answering next week, you have to email to us. Okay, complicated, but it's um, it's all well thought through, obviously. Right, let's go overhead and start with, um, or maybe just uh, show you the kind of wool that you will be using today to make the Christmas tree. So if you are following the description on the YouTube channel, you will have some of the um, country sheep um, bats, which is a sort of a gray brown. If you've got a different kind of brown or even a white, you can work with this definitely. We've just sort of gone for this color because if there's a bit of the color peeping through the tree, at least it's not like in contrast to, um, to the outer colors. You will have um, some forest green and some um, mountain sheep lichen green. That's to mix in with the green. And then you need some red for the bucket there. Or the bucket and then if you are making a little presents and the star then you need some contrasting colors um the neon yellow our new zealand neon, neon yellow is brilliant for the star it's so shiny and so bright just like a star and then you can have some sort of other colors to make little baubles and you can even make little presents now this tree instruction um sheet 
not well it's not a sheet on um this this tree instruction let's start again is available for free on our website so you can actually um print this off from your computer and do it yourself in your own time um share it with your friends if you want tell your friends they can watch the youtube tutorial to support it maybe you can have a watch party together who knows you've got the written instructions you've got me blubbering on and uh, showing you how to do it and um if you if you want to rewatch it again then um just just rewatch it anytime press stop rewind and so on and so forth so that's um all possible obviously with our live streams that are staying on youtube and um they will help you through the whole um, make, making of a tree. Now, we'll be honest, I have got a bit of a repetitive strain injury in my upper arm. I um, I go to the gym regularly and I thought, oh, I've, I've done something to my arm working out. And then I realized I didn't. It's just needle pelting. And I, I noticed it in the gym because obviously I'm using my arm in all kinds of different ways. And um, so I'm, I'm trying not to do too much stabbing, which um, may mean I might go to um, a bit of a half finished tree that I did earlier, just so that I don't have to do too much stubbing. Anyway, let's get started. And this is the overhead camera. So I've got my um, brown wool here. Um, now the quantities are, you will find them on, on YouTube, but I'm going by um, on the description on YouTube. I've forgotten actually how much they are, but I'm sure Emma will tell me in a minute. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you have to roll this brown wool. So if you've got bits and pieces that are not quite, this is actually quite together so I'm not gonna have to do anything with it but if you had a lump that sort of was just hanging there just lay it on top and integrate it into your piece by spreading it on top so the smaller pieces go on top of the larger piece underneath and then with this one you're rolling it in but from one side you're tucking it in on one side and you're leaving it not tucked in on the other side so you're rolling it in tuck it in from one side but don't tuck it in from the other side so until you get to the very end and tease the last bit of fibers out so you're already making as you can see a cone shape and then when you get to the very end of the last fibers use your felting needle and just stub these last wispy ends in to secure them if you have never needle felted before then um, we have lots and lots of useful um, beginner tutorials um, how to use the needle but I can just tell you very quickly what not to do is you must never um, put a, a stress on the needle by poking it or or jiggling it or wriggling it it goes in and out in a straight line it is really really quite simple the movement comes from the upper arm hence my uh, repetitive strain injury rather than from the wrist so you're not doing anything with the wrist um, you're just literally going in and out in a straight line and that is how you're tangling the fibers up inwardly because you're using a specialist needle that has got not there has got notches at the end of the working part of the needle which starts about here and goes all the way across to the tip so that's basically just a needle felting um, the technique in a nutshell so what I've done now is I've, I've, I've got already quite a, um, a, a base here because I've that's where I've tucked the fibers in and I've got quite wispy and loose fibers here that now I need to needle felt into a cone shape so you can make the base a little bit more solid by stabbing the needle into it and what I'm going to use today which is unusual for me I'm actually going to use um, a three needle felting tool now we have two in our repertoire we've got the blue one maybe you've never seen them side by side they look quite similar um, one is unbranded and one is a clover one um, the pink one is the clover the blue one is unbranded now in principle they are pretty much the same I've only got two needles in this one um, you can take the needles out and replace them they both come loaded with needles but this one I will be totally honest has got a much nicer feel to it it just looks a little bit more um, like better quality definitely and you can also take this out so you can you can stab deeper into your work so that is a function that the, the blue one doesn't have um, it also has got a hidden compartment at the back which I'm not even going to try and open because it, it's really hard to open it I found I'm gonna have a go now aren't I well anyway it's pretty useless for felting needles because it's too short but if you you could put a sewing needle in there I've really no idea why they've done this oh it has got a little hinge on it so you do you do have to open it 
anyway, I'm not going to do this now because um, that's something for you to explore. This blue one doesn't have it. Um, and uh, it comes with a lid so that you can keep your needle safe and not accidentally poke yourself. So I'm going to actually use this um, three needle felting tool. So if you want to go deeper into your shape, then you can take this off and just give it a few stabs. So this obviously makes it three times faster than you would uh, normally do it um, by uh, using a single needle holding it in your hand. And what I'm doing is actually I'm putting like a slight indentation into the base of the tree because that makes it stand a lot more solid. And um, now I'm going to the blue tool only because there's only three needles in there. And um, I'm going to um, stab along my shape to make it pointy. The three needles would probably be a little bit too, um, well, let's use a phrase that uh, Pam uses, too stabby. So um, if you don't know Pam Duffy, you must go and um, look on her YouTube um, channel. She does a, a lot of needle felting and demonstration. She always um, makes our Makers Box projects um, and you can you can sort of watch her how what take she takes on it. She unpacks it in front of the camera um, and starts it literally from fresh, not even having read any instructions or anything like that. So the tree is meant to be about that height. So if it's slightly shorter, you could um, add a bit more wool on the top or, or just um, leave it be as it is. We are not actually felting this down very hard because we're going to have to attach an awful lot of... Um, green foliage over the top so we want this to be quite um, quite soft still so it's quite squishy it has got the right shape you can also stretch it a bit if it's too short and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the red bucket for this I'm using our New Zealand um, poppy red but if you had our um, deep red variegated you could use that too or maybe even our new shimmer red which um i've got somewhere but i haven't got it handy enough to um to put it on there um the shimmer red is basically like this color but it's got like a shiny shimmer um running through it and that is now it's a brand new product that is now available on our website um, and you can purchase it from there so what i'm doing now is i'm going to add bits of the red wool onto the onto uh, the base of the tree but all i'm doing is i'm focusing on felting um just the base the red round the base and I'm leaving the, the ends at the top wispy for now and then I work my way around the whole of the tree using more red I, sp I spread it out so that um, I'm not actually adding bulk I'm literally just coloring in the, the, the tree um, base and you will uh, you'll wonder well why why on earth is all this wispy stuff here that is i'll show you in a minute how to make a nice neat edge that's a technique you could use on other things as well that's a technique we use on our norm hats so that the they look as if they they've got a slouched hat um sitting um on top of their head rather than a needle felted onto their head which of course it is but it doesn't have to look that way so you use um some of this red wool and just add this around the base of your tree remember if you need to know the quantities you find the quantities on our website by looking at the instructions which are free the christmas tree instructions are free um, to to um, to use from our website and um, and it tells you exactly how how much wool you need um, to make this exact size tree um, and um, you could use, definitely could use our, um, uh, no, that you can't use that because you can't buy that. What was I thinking? Oh, yes, you could use, oh, that's right. I haven't got that to show you, but you could use our um, Christmas um, mix, wool mix. There you have um, the, the right brown in there, the right red. You've got, got a choice of red in there and you get green in there as well. So that will definitely make you the tree. And um, you could um, then just use little wisps of wool for other, for the decorations like the baubles and the star. So I'm just, it looks a bit bold here. So I'm just adding a little bit more red to that side. And then I'm, I'm making the, the base look nice first before I'm sh I show you what you're doing with that wispy top in a minute. So to um, fold the bits in, you just tuck them underneath the tree. Remember, or the the, the it's got now got it's now the the bucket. Remember that um, keeping the edge 
Don't go too close to the edge to needle felt it because you want to keep that edge um, so that the tree will stand on it. You don't want to round the edge off. So make sure that you stab in right to the edge from the sides. But when you turn the tree so that you can stab underneath it, then only stab away from the edge and make, um, if anything, make an indentation in the base and that will help the tree to stand. There we go. That's it. So hopefully, um, if you're felting along, please don't despair if you are not getting this done as quickly as I do. You might not, for starters, you might not have a three needle felting tool. I am notoriously known for being quite a fast felter or crafter in general. And um, so don't, don't think you've got to felt as fast as I do. Right, this is the base of the tree now. I haven't covered it in entirely, but it doesn't need to. I've now got a tree that has, has sort of like flames going up the side. But that's fine. So I'm going to just peel them off a little bit. I haven't felted them on, so they, they should just come loose like this. And all I'm going to do now is I'm tucking these wispy fibers in so that I've got a neat edge like that. So I'm that's what I'm going to do. And then with my single needle, I needle felt from the top into that um, area that I folded under, but I'm not flat felting the edge into the tree. I'm literally just going into that gap that you imagine there is between the tree and the bucket. That's what I'm doing. So you do this all along. Some of the wispy bits might be a bit bigger, some might be a bit smaller. And just, you can always take wispy bits off if there's too much. So don't think you've got to work with what there is. You can always tear some off gently because um, that's the lovely nature about needle felting. You can actually um, take things off if there's too much and you can add more if there's not enough so you know you know how to add these wispy bits to the top just lay some more wool onto the bucket and then make sure you've got the wispy ends at the top to work with and you do this all around the base of the bucket and um, I'm in a minute uh, when that bit is done I'm gonna have a little look at the chat because I'm dying to find out some of the questions I'm probably I'll be, probably be so tempted to answer them but what we're going to do is we will also copy out the questions that you're popping onto the comments now because the questions today might win you um, the Christmas pudding and um, uh, Robin bauble pack but we will copy these out as well because if there's an amazing question then um, and that everybody should benefit from then of course we will um, try and um, answer this next week this is the last live stream um, of the year the last live stream of the year next week so we're making it a little bit different in that we are offering for you to ask questions rather than um, me just telling you what to, you might not even want to know Right, so I'm now using my three needle felting tool, but I've only got two needles in it. That works really well to do this. Um, load your tool up with as many needles as you need. Well, this one you're restricted to three, obviously. And I'm just stabbing into the top to make sure I've got that, that extra lip here. And that is now um, my Christmas tree with um, a bucket attached. And you can even that out a little bit more um, you can felt this down a lot more, make it a lot smoother, um, but a lot of um, the top of that bucket will be hidden away by um, the, the foliage of the tree that will sort of overlap it. Right, now I'm going to just quickly change the camera view and then um, um, show you this tree, what it looks like at the moment. There you are, it's like a, it's like a tree in a pot, it's like a flame, well a brown flame the wrong color around but you could make a flame that way so you've got your your cone shape here and I've got my tree there and the the base I haven't covered entirely in red I have done it with this one so if you if you want it to be neat and I've done it with this one as well then feel free to obviously um make it all not that anybody will see it but you might really need to do this right I'm just gonna have a quick look at the comments Try not to impale my, myself on the needles. Always remember, tidy your tools away, especially the needles when you are not using them. So what is going on here? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You really are chatty today, aren't you? This is gonna be, um... <sighs> okay, so we're still saying hello. I'm, I'm trying to get to the top from where I left it off. So um, reading the comments. Oh yes, okay, that makes 
that makes sense. Um, um, Karen has got morning in, you're in Canada, Karen, aren't you? Yes. Love the kitty in the basket, my next make. Excellent. I can't wait to see yours, Diane. Um, so let's have some, I'm nice busy writing up. Mr. Sparkly Hearts tutorial, but we we'll love getting that heart box in the mail. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah, so if you, um, I haven't got the hearts with me actually, but we d they're a bit like that, but they, um, they are more like a, um, a single, um, hanging decoration with a, a lovely ribbon to go with it. And, uh, that is a free tutorial. If you can find it, uh, you might be able to, if you go onto the Facebook page for, for the virtual village hall, and it was um, it was on the third of December that um, this was a half hour tutorial just to teach you how how to make that heart um, shape. Then it is definitely a free tutorial there. Otherwise, we do have a couple of um, YouTube videos as well on the heart as well. So you you and and of course, if you get your heart with ribbon pack, the, the instructions are in there as well. Um, anyway. Uh, um, Yes, Faith says, uh, yes, Steffi, completely normal. Need I mention the scissors? Oh, uh, yes, Faith, you and I and many others will know what it's all about, the scissors, but I'm not going to retell the story. Um, love the fairy wings. Yes, the, the, the love fairy wings. They are actually, it's a new, it's a new um, method. So you will be using um, feathers and tulle. I think that's how it's called, tulle. It's like an organza fabric and it's got little little sparkly spots on it. So hopefully you can see it. She's definitely a very stunning fairy, just as you imagine um, um, a love fairy to be. So think, think Valentine's Day perhaps already. Um, <laughs> Faith wants to know if we play pranks on each other. <laughs> Well, what can I say? <laughs> we do actually. Oh, I, I, I could tell you a really funny flank actually, and this is involves Sophie. I, Sophie won't be watching, but her baby is very, very nearly due. But I have, I will tell you this one plank. So we stayed at an Airbnb on our many travels to different shows when there were still shows on, and there will be again. And um, it was sometimes you go to Airbnbs, and we always have our self-contained place because we don't want to share with anybody, and we're dead grumpy when we um after a show, so we hardly ever speak to each other either. But this was a, we only obviously needed uh, three bedrooms, but this was a, um, a three bedroom house. And it, it was so obvious that it was somebody's place that it just vacated for us, which I always find a bit creepy, I will be honest. So of course we're exploring and finding out which room and whatever. And then there was this one room, there was a bed in there and lots of clothes and everything else. I didn't, I didn't really see it very well. And I'm like, I said to Sophie, oh, I think there's somebody else in this house. And she said, yes, I think there is somebody else. And then she said, I have another look. And she opens the door and she shuts it really quickly. And she says, oh, there's somebody asleep in the bed. And I have, I just I had a fit. I really did have a fit. I'm like, right, right. I'm not having this. I'm dialing. I'm ringing them now. I'm ringing them. I'm not having this. And then I was so totally, totally ecstatically excited. Not in a good way, though, um, about it. That she, she, I couldn't hear what she was saying. She said, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. There's nobody in this room. There's nobody. I'm like, oh, oh, there's nobody in this room. Okay, okay, okay. I put the phone down. <laughs> I just fully expected there's somebody to be there. And it was just my worst nightmare come true. So, um, yes, we do play pranks on each other. It's usually Sophie playing a prank on me. I will, I will be honest. Um, but I'm easily fooled, you see, I'm so easily, um, um, yeah, I don't, I have absolutely, I'm the naivest person on the planet. Um, my question is who's designing all the boxes and where do you get your ideas from? Well, we designed the boxes, Sophie and I, um, are the sole designers and who knows where we get the ideas from <laughs> in the deepest, darkest corners of our, um, rainbow brain, I suppose. Um. I'm going to sit here all answering all these questions now, aren't I? Do you ever stay home in pyjamas all day at home or go shopping in them? Mm, no, I'm not I'm not an all-day pyjama person. I will be honest, I, I get up really early in the morning, I get dressed, and I might go, I might get into my pyjamas really early in the evening, but I haven't been shopping in my pyjamas yet. Um, 
oh god i'm gonna answer all these questions i can just there's no there's gonna be no christmas tree today i'm just gonna answer all these questions no no i'm only joking do all your felties come out to play when you're asleep yeah definitely how did steffi start felting what i felt it for my children over 15 years ago ah oh, okay stop answering the question what mischief do you get up to to keep everyone's spirit up and who is the most fun crazy person hmm I think we all have a bit of a share of being um, definitely fun crazy um, and um, we, we're going to have a, a really lovely Christmas gathering except we're not gathering because we're always there anyway but we, we have to do this in our workshop on on Friday and we're all thinking up um, some crazy things to do so that's um, um, is quite funny as well. Hello Steffi and Fluffy friends can can only be here for a short while oh jane don't worry you can re rewatch it remember it stays on give us the thumbs up everybody on youtube gotta give us the thumbs up tell all your friends to subscribe tell them there's this amazing channel um the makers and um and and just tell them to watch steffi what is your favorite maker sub box you ever designed emma what is your favorite fairy so far oh alicia that's two questions um and i would have to think about that one actually so um, oh, thank you, Donna. Remember, thumbs up. There, you said it. Faith says, my doggies keep nicking my makes and either chewing them or utter destruction or hugging them in their baskets. What's your funny felt pet story? Oh, I think I told mine already. But um, yes, that was the ox that I made for the book that never went in the book because it was shredded to bits by my um, very lovely Cocker Spaniel, who I couldn't be cross with because she looked at me with these eyes like, like that, a bit like that. I didn't mean to. Okay, right. Moving on, because I want to answer all these questions, but I'm not allowed to. So, tree it is. Okay, next bit on the tree. Now we need to make lots and lots of these little um, felt triangles that we're then felting onto the tree. And um, I'm just going to go on the overhead camera. Oh, before we do this, I will just say that I will just um, show you something else there. Weekend hug. We have got spaces available on the 6th and 7th of February. We filled the first weekend, the weekend before. There are 10 spaces, 10 Zoom spaces that we, um, we're offering. And you can make um, the valet sheep that's in the picture. It's quite large, as you can see by the apples. Um, you get um, a luxury felting parcel with all the materials, tools and special treats. And they are really nice treats, I, I will be honest. Um, and we have um, we have lots of useful tips and tricks um, up our sleeve and an evening entertainment. It goes over two weekends, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening and then Sunday morning to finish it off. And um, so we have on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, we have a question and answer session on Zoom. And if you want to um, join this, then please send us an email also to info at the makers with two s's.co.uk to get your Zoom link um, emailed to you where if you want to ask questions about the zoom or get an idea of what it might be like if you want to see it on screen then um, that's a good opportunity to do that right let's get on with the tree okay now what we're going to do is we're going to make lots of these um, felt triangles to um, put on the tree so first of all you can just use the green the darker green and um, you flatten this out and this is sort of a technique of making dog um, not just dog ears but ears in general fox ears or whatever to make triangular shaped ears basically so you go you fold it in half and then you fold one side in and fold the other side right on top of it so you've made a nice neat triangle and then you felt that down now if you ha happen to have a brush mat then um, that is a good way of using it. You felt these on both sides, but you're leaving these wispy ends wispy. So you're not, they're always good to hold on. So you have your fingers out of your way. Like I said, if you have a brush mat, use that and you can use your seven needle felting tool, obviously as well. I should, probably should have felted this down a bit more. It's still quite thick. And that will save huge amounts of time and will make it flat really fast. Felt it from both sides. You can use this um, seven needle felting tool with the earth mat, but you just have to go a little bit slower. It's not like the speediest way of working. Um, and then obviously turn it around. So now you've, you've made one of these and then it's got the wispy ends here. Now these are the wispy ends. 
oh, I think we're co coloring this um, top here in green first. So let's do that quickly. So I've, I've, got, I've, a step, I've skipped a step ahead. Um, you need to color this in with green, but don't color. You don't need to color it in as neatly as you've colored in the um, the the bucket because it doesn't matter if a little bit of brown shows through. And the way that I do this, I literally use. I hold on to one end here and I stroke it, stroke the wool out. So I layer it on as thin as I possibly can, rather than putting great big wads on there. And then you use your felting needle. You, um, I'm using my three. Um, needle tool even though I've only got two needles in there at the moment felt that down and just put it on and this is mainly especially if you've used a lighter core wool like maybe um, a white or anything like this this will just make sure that the um, foliage that we're putting on um, if it doesn't cover all of it exactly because it's not a very detailed tree this is just a really sort of to give um, the impression of a Christmas tree rather than needle felting every single pine uh, pine needle can you imagine that and then just felt it on onto here to cover up that um, area that's poking out of the bucket. And if a little bit of brown is, is peeping out, then so be it. That, that's just like a real tree. But if you have got if you have used a, li a light color um, base core wool, then do um, put then do cover it um, up properly. Put enough green on there feeling all bad now that I've answered so many questions. <laughs> That's so much more fun than making a tree. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, don't ask me any more questions. I'm not even going to look at the comments. You're tempting me. You temptresses and temp tempters. Is that the male word for temptress? What is the male word for temptress then? Is that tempters? Tempters must be tempters. There. Felting that on. So you're obviously tucking that green away. Um, so don't don't let that hang over the tree, uh, the the bucket, the red. You don't have to have a red bucket. You can make it a different color bucket. I've just gone with traditional red buckets here. <clears throat> but if you want a purple bucket or a yellow bucket, or I wouldn't maybe go for a green bucket unless it's a really different green. Um, then of course go for it. So paint it on by just literally it's um, it, it feels almost like painting holding onto the fibers and let them sort of spread across that makes sure you have a nice thin layer on there and um, you're not adding bulk you're just literally coloring in the tree and then once you've done that then obviously go back to making your foliage triangles and um, and then you're fastening them onto them by spreading the wispy fibers out. So it was like was like this, just to remind you, spread them out, sit them onto the tree. Um, the idea is that you start from the bottom up and that you have larger triangles at the bottom than at the top. So that it sort of gives you an idea of what you're aiming for. Now you will probably be making about 20 of these triangles. I counted it on my tree. I had no idea it was that many because I was just sort of doing it um, and not thinking much about numbers. But you're basically um, putting that tri triangle on there. You can even sort of shape it up a bit or have it hanging down flat. There are lots of different um, pine trees or Christmas trees with different shape um, um, foliage. So that's basically up to you. Now I will just show you if you're making um, if you want to add a bit of variation into your tree, then you can use the lighter green and mix it in with the darker green. Now there is a, um, a free tutorial of how to mix wool, but I will just show you very quickly. You lay them on top of each other and then you pull them apart. And ideally, that's what I always do, lay them on top in the same direction again and pull them apart. You don't need to mix these fibers up because they're already tangled up. It's actually quite nice to keep them or to get them running in the same direction as much as you can. If you're mixing a wool top and you need it to be more like a bat, then you would crisscross them and you want to tangle these up. But these were actually trying for the fibers to run in the same direction. So when you've done this, then obviously spread it out into a, um, a, um, a wad like you did earlier. Fold it in half, fold one side in and then fold the other side right on, on top of it. Stab it down first of all so that it is, is secure. 
with your felting needle and um, I'm obviously using our earth mats, our earth friendly felting mats, absolutely love them. We sold out for the very first time during our um, last sale. We sold out completely. I'm just going to have to pull this um, bit of fibre sticking out there. And um, and we've now got them back in stock, but I think we're um, a bit short on the A4. They are coming, so yes, not they're all they're made in the UK, so we um, we don't have to rely on on any borders crossing. Right there we go. That's um, another one of these triangle foliage triangles done. Um, add it to your tree again, exactly the same way you did the early one. Make sure you tuck the green fibers away from the bucket, so not that they're hanging down, and then just felt over the top, and then repeat this many many times so you might want to make just all the triangles first and space your wool out and then you know if you have only got a limited amount of green then you know exactly um, how to space them out so you don't um, make too many um, or make not enough whichever way so you could make lots of them first and then design your tree that way or if you just want to have the variety just make one at a time and felt it on and then see how you go and then as you go up to the top you um you will make them smaller smaller and smaller and then the top could just be um colored in sort of green see how you go with um how much wool you've got left but they're definitely big down here and then getting smaller and smaller until they're like little little sort of sausages up here that's um that's how you will decorate the tree. It is deceptive how many you've got to make because when you only look at one side, you think, oh, there's about five or six or seven. And then, of course, you've got the whole round of the tree to do. So that is um, basically what you will be doing. And I I've have a feeling that um, you might be doing this um, much longer than uh, in an hour is possible. And it's also longer than I can um, manage in an hour especially with a bit of a dodgy arm at the moment so I'm I'm keeping it there for making the foliage if anybody needs to know how needs to see how to make that triangle again then give me a shout and I will um, repeat this one more time and in the meantime I'm just brushing my um, earth mat clean because there's a lot of green fiber on there if you have these earth mats and you want to keep them um, really clean then you have to clean them quite regularly um, because the fibers, um, like with any felting mat, you get fibers in them. And uh, that's the same uh, with the brush mats, by the way. Um, so do clean them off um, regularly and then they, you will keep them in a nice in a nice sort of cream colored state still. They will discolor a little bit, but not as much as um, as you, you, you they would be if you didn't clean them off. And these brush mats, uh, we do normally sell them. I don't know if we've got them at the moment, but we will be getting new a new variety in which I'm excited um, to find out if they're working or not. So that's something else that's happening. Right, I'm just gonna have a quick look at the comments without um, getting too distracted by the questions. Um, I'm yeah. I'm just gonna ask. I'm just gonna ask the questions, Bob. I'll answer them in my mind and not out loud with my mouth. Um, uh, so, um, just trying to find where I've been. Oh, you've got a proper tree, Nixie, with, um, but it's not Nixie. Your name is actually something else, but I'm just going to call you Nixie because I can't remember. Um, need to show my tree as it has lots of meeses, meese and doggies on it. Oh, well, if you're referring to mice, these look lovely on, um, on a Christmas tree, of course. You can get our um, three white mice kit that also makes the Christmas hats. That's still a Christmas product. Um, this is gonna be discontinued, not forever, but just for the for the seasons um, after Christmas, obviously. So um, you have to get it while stocks last. And then, um, um, so yes, so these are amazing tree decorations. They can also hang on their tails. Um, do, oh, see, this is what I mean. Oh, I still wanna answer these questions. Do you all compete against each other to see who can make the best felted item? No, we don't. We're not compet competitors. We're we're a team. Um, sorry, I'm already answering it again. Oh, okay. I'm not meant to answer. That's next week. 
Okay, I'm, what is the first thing you do on Christmas morning? We crack up a, um, a bottle of Bucks Fizz. Oh, that sounds exciting. I might actually follow that. That sounds much more fun than what I do. Um, do you think of ideas for the subscription boxes together or do you plan for the whole year? Both A bit of both, actually. Um, what else? I'm answering questions. Don't stop asking. No, don't stop asking questions. Well, maybe I should get on with the tree because as soon as I get to um, the star at the top, then you then you won't ask any questions anymore. Right. I'm going to get on with the tree. So um, making little balls to go on the tree for decoration. Now, this is a really simple, really, really simple thing to do. You just have to watch your fingers, basically. But it's, um, oh, no, let's not use that. That's going on. For the star you just need a little bit of wool we have got um, a free tutorial on our website for this as well um, you just roll it as tightly as you can into a, um, a little ball shape so this is like almost um, how we do the basic shapes but in miniature and then you need your single felting needle so don't use um, a big felting tool for this and then just stab into it um, gently so you can let go of it and it's no longer just opening up and then you have to um, felt it down all around a little bit. This is where I mean, watch your fingers. That's a, um, probably something where you, you definitely don't take your eye off when you're making it. And when you've felted it down into a nice neat little ball, give it lots of little stubs, keep turning it to keep it uh, nice, and, nice and 3D. Then um, you can just choose your branch this is a bit fatter this one felt it on first of all around the edges because that will maintain the 3dness of the ball there you go and it's felt it on might have to dis dis um entangle the um triangle foliage that you um that you fasten onto the tree and then you've you've basically added a tree decoration so that's really really super easy with this one i felt it right to the edge so it's hanging off it and then you can um decorate your tree um however you like that's basically um to do with the baubles now the star aha question stop now thank goodness okay the star you've got a template that comes on our instructions i've actually cut this one out so we have recommended for you to use water soluble paper i just will make this really really very clear that it's finished now the competition has finished no more questions this we're going to pick a winner now a random winner so there is our um there's the um the paper star that i've cut it out cut out cut it out talk like a toddler um and um and this you can what we are ideally what i should have been using is water soluble paper but i forgot to have some here so there are other ways of doing it if you're using water soluble paper you lay that on top then you trace around it with a pencil or a biro and then you fill you basically stab the wool inside um that shape on the water soluble paper which is a little bit like um you can also use um i've got here some pre-felt so I'm going to try and use that and see if that works so imagine that was the water soluble paper that's what you would be doing basically filling that shape with um with a yellow wool and um, as long as you sort of keep within that shape you because you're cutting this out later on um you can um define the shape a little bit better so this is a uh, this works definitely better with uh, water soluble paper but you could be using pre-felt so just anything that you have to felt onto um, to make that star shape and remember you will be cutting this out so even if it's if it's not precise you can still do that now you have to remember you have to remember when you um felt flat you've got to lift this off the mat regularly otherwise you fasten this on forever so add a little bit more yellow and i believe that um the winner for today which is tuesday the live stream on youtube is helen p well done helen you won yourself a bauble um christmas pack which makes two three robins and um three christmas puddings so please email us info at themakers.co.uk let us know that you are the winner so that we can take um your details and then um send it out to you as soon as we can so obviously when you watch this on thursday the 17th of um december it will be somebody else who will win that um pack but same kind of story right so um that's 
um, the tree still there. And then you can, also with a water-soluble paper, you can do this from the other side as well. So um, normally with the water-soluble paper, when we use it, we, we, we um, dissolve the water-soluble paper, but we're only using the water-soluble paper so that we have got a base to needle felt on and, and, and have got a, a base that actually holds the shape that we need to create. So just felt that um, yellow onto either your water soluble paper or as I'm doing here right now on, onto pre-felt. But I'm only using the pre-felt. The water soluble paper would be my preference. But I haven't got any. And ag again, remember to lift it off and the template for the star um, is on, on our instructions, which is a free instructions on our website to make the Christmas tree with decorations. And, um, and once you've done that, um, add a little bit more if you wish on, on either side, um, because we're sort of, it, it's a flat star, but kind of um, not quite flat. It was also a little bit 3D. So add a little bit more. And once you've done that, then you can use your um, little scissors and cut around the shape so if it's not as neat as you expect it to be you can neaten it up by cutting around it so the the little star that i'm using is about um the little star that i'm using is about um from from one pointy tip to the other is is a it's just under three centimeters i've just measured it if you are printing um the free instructions of it might be that you get a different size depending on on what system you're using and what printer and so on so i'm just cutting around the shape now my little scissors so you can make that a lot more crisp again the edges of that star and you would do the same with the water soluble paper. So even though it's water soluble paper, you're not dissolving the paper. You're um, you're leaving it will sort of disintegrate into the make into the star. So there's no need to dissolve it. And then once you've done that, I've got a little star here. That's it. And then you um, basically just pop that on top of the tree. And you just, um, if you lie it down ever so slightly flat and just very gently at the very, very tip of the star, felt it into the tree, it sort of starts um, coming up, standing up by itself. And then that's basically a, a little star added to the top of the tree. And um, all that is left now is for me to show you how to um, make um, the little gifts. And I show you that in a minute. So... That is the, the little star I've added to the tree just now with um, pre-felt. If you have a, um, a white piece of, um, or even a yellow piece of uh, felt, you can use the template and draw on there and do the same thing by covering both sides of the felt sheet to make, as, as long as the felt sheet is nice and thin, remember we love our viscous uh, wool felt sheet because they are thin they're easy to felt on and they don't lose the shape so that is something that you could do instead and um and what else so we we um we've we've now covered the tree making the baubles the star and um, what's left are the little presents if you've got any wool left over you can needle felt little presents and um, oh, there's one missing somewhere. Oh, well, never mind. If you are making the hoggies, oh dear, <laughs> you is just fallen off the table. No, it was Holly actually. Ugh, come on, Holly. Oh dear. Okay. So um, if, if you're making um, the hoggy family, um, you could, you, um, what was I going to say now? Oh yes, you will know that there are little presents in each um, of the, so that you've got some little, um, presents that Holly has made and they can be uh, added to the tree um, and I'm not going to give anything else away but you know that there's little candy cane presents in there so they can be added to the tree already and if you um, if you have made your hoggy family we could also use next week as the um, the unifying um, live stream of the whole family because that could be the first time that all of the Hoggy family will be seen in one picture because Homer is definitely home um, next week Tuesday because you will be making 
um, you will be opening the fourth envelope this Sunday on the fourth um, of Ad um I'm getting confused. Then. Yes, on the fourth of Advent. It is the fourth of Advent. Goodness, I cannot believe it's the fourth of Advent. Anyway, Christmas presents. So um, I'm going to go on to the small um, overview camera here again. So this is the funny thing about this is that you actually, for the first time, you're actually allowed to make something square. This is one of the biggest things that we um, always have to tell people when they're trying to, when they're absolutely new to needle felting and they're trying to make something 3D, they're always turning things but they're always turning it 90 degrees and so it ends up square. So um, so you have to always tell people when they're beginners that they, they have to turn it, but not just 90 degrees. They have to turn it um, maybe <laughs> like a little bit, a little bit at a time. So if you've got um, bits of wool left and you, you, you're not too fast how big the present is going to be, then um, what you're going to do is you're going to fold this, fold this whole piece in and then you fold it again. So you've made like a flat, fat, sausage there and then you're just folding it um on from the other side so that you have now got a little sort of a little i don't know folded up almost like a, a, a um a fat sausage here so i'll show you that again so you fold it in half like you did with it with the um foliage and then fold it in, um, in half again and then you can fold it in from the other side maybe you have to fold it two or three times depending on how uh, big you want your parcel to be and then you just felt that down felt the wispy ends down and now you are now you literally felt on one side then you turn it 90 degrees felt on the other side so I'm just felting like a, a square area on each side then you turn it again just 90 degrees so literally imagine it was a, a cube that you're turning around turn it again and then felt um, each of the what I would call the longer sides at the moment on my shape anyway felt them flat and keep going over again I've still got these ends here that are wispy and I'm going to uh, sort these out in a minute so just um, make make really sure that you're literally turning this so that it always sits flat on um, on the opposite side that you're felting and uh, when you've got sort of a nice flat shape there then you can um, work on the ends and you're literally just stabbing them in accordingly you will probably have to work on the longer sides again once you've done that you have to watch your fingers on this because now you can go a little bit further to the edge uh, whereas before that was too fluffy but remember you're only ever felting in in these um, um, in these steps 90 degrees and do the other side and if you want to be really, really perfectionist, you can make this like oh, the best, best little cube you've ever done. So just um, use a single needle and um, I'm using a, um, a medium single needle. So stab this in and you saw the, the, the little fluff, the little bit of fluff that I had makes that sort of size um, present. These things remind me a little bit of Petit um, Fou. Is that what it's called? The French patisserie praline type things. Is that what they're called? Petit Fou? No, I can't remember now. No, 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 that's not it. Um, oh, come on, somebody tell me. Shouldn't use um, big words if I don't know how to pronounce them. Um, right, so anyway, that's um, a little parcel here, nice and square done. And now we need to put um, the, the uh, little string around it or the... Um, whatever it's called, forgotten that as well. And I'm going to use a really contrasting color now so you can see it nice on the screen. So you have a wisp of petit fours. Petit four, petit fours, that's it. I know that. Don't ask me how to spell it. Right, and that, so you're um, making the um, string literally between your fingers. So you're giving that a good old twizzle. The thinner, the better because then it looks um, a little bit more delicate. So you can tease it further apart, just make sure you twist it between your fingers. And then you have one that um, basically just goes all the way around and closes at the top. So you're felting this in as you go around. In a, If you keep this in a really uh, neat line, then the fibers will sort of sink in that neat line. Work all the way around. Just give it a bit of a pull again if it needs to be. So keep working on your flat areas. Don't 
don't felt into the corners because you'll flatten them and or make them round. We still want to maintain that square shape. Go over the top there, and then bring the other side up. Ow, that was my finger, but only just. So watch your fingers when you do this, definitely. So I've gone along the long side. Well, I've, I'm sort of coming. Yeah, I've gone along the long sides. That's it. There. Held that down. And then um, you make another piece of that. And that needs to be a little bit longer now to have extra for sort of a pretend bow on the top. So um, obviously it needs to be also shorter because it's a sh you're going around the shorter sides. Start at one end, go all the way around the side, then that side, and then at the top, make sure you close it up first as you would normally. So go all the way around. And then whatever extra you have got left, if you haven't got anything extra, you can always add it on top of it. You could just um, have like a, a little bow there if you wanted to. But it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't look too precise because it's tiny. Nobody, as long as it looks like there's something extra, they're all slightly different. That one has got a proper bow. This one doesn't. So, um... That's how you make tiny little presents to go under the tree. But of course, you also have got presents in your hoggy packs that you're going to have to wrap in um, that you have to wrap in the in the um, um, Christmas wrapping paper that comes in the hoggy in the hoggy box as well. If you're doing this for the hoggies, if you're just doing this for fun to uh, make some fun mini Christmas decorations, then um, that that's absolutely fine and you can felt this down a lot neater so it's less less frizzy remember to get a really smooth and fine finish use our 42 extra fine twisted needles absolutely amazing so if you wanted to make perfect presents that almost don't look like they're needle felted then you could um, spend a lot of time doing that um, to get the um, desired effect so I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else that I've forgotten. Join us on Wednesday night, which is tomorrow evening, the 16th of December at 7. I, I want to say, oh, I, I just have to look at that. Um, um, uh, no, it doesn't say that at all on there. Okay. We have, we have, I'm just going to ask Emma to give me, um, to give me the um, idea of, of what time the Zoom is tomorrow in case you wanted to join us tomorrow. And um, so just to just to reiterate, for next week, our, our um, live stream hasn't got a particular topic, though I do have a little, um, a little surprise up my sleeve, which um, involves no needle felting, but makes a really cute little Christmas decoration. And it, it does involve wool, however. But next week, it's all about you asking us questions, email them to us, info, at the makers.co.uk makers with two s's and um and we we can't wait to see lots of questions we might group them together so that we can answer lots of them all in one go but do let us have them because i i've got to get prepare myself and um, if you're asking me a question or oh, how do you um use angelina fiber and I haven't got any with me then it's really hard i'm just gonna have to use words rather than action and um so that is next week the 22nd our last live stream this year so don't miss it on at 1 p.m. Tell all your friends if they want to just have a bit of fun and join us. And um, I might even wear a silly, silly jumper or something like that. And, um, uh, oh yes, and the Zoom question and answers for our weekend hug, which is on the 6th and 7th of February. If you want to know anything about it, then do email us um, at info at the makers.co.uk. And that is for tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. And that will be on Zoom. So we need to send you an invitation to uh, log into our Zoom. I know lots of you who are watching right now already signed up for the 30s and the 31st. But if you're still um, wondering um, is this for you? Is this not for you? It's going to be a really lovely, warm, cozy weekend where we can all have a bit of fun together. We can tell each other stories. We'll be seeing each other. It's not like a one way thing like what I'm doing right now here. Um, we, we, I can see Emma will be there with me um, and we can see your, your makes. You can make this lovely valley um, sheep. 
which is um which is suitable for beginners i promise you you can do it especially with us helping you and uh, we have some fun activities up our sleeve as well and there will be um, lovely luxury items in the box for you to enjoy um, this is to replace our weekend retreat which of course we can't do at the moment because we can't meet face to face but we will be again and um, until then we just have to make the best of the situation but I think I have a feeling those Zoom weekends might actually stay the, um, in the future as well. Right that's everything from me I don't think I've forgotten anything looking around you can still make the nativity that's on our YouTube channel still you can revisit that um, same with the Father Christmas nativity kit here the donkey is part of that um hoggies um well in production mode and homer is coming home next next week um on the 22nd we'll have a um um the uh, uni reunification of the mchoggy family finally yes 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 and um that's all there is to say so take care everybody stay safe um Yes, what else can I say? Probably nothing, so I best shut up. Um, take care, everybody, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.